Hi, welcome to Health Vision. I'm Jackie Wolf, Associate Professor of Social Medicine at Ohio University. Today we're talking about how the emphasis on homework and standardized testing at increasingly younger ages affects children's emotional health and their feelings about school. Our guests are Professor Margaret King of Ohio University of Human and Consumer Sciences. Dr. King specializes in child and family studies. And Joan Lynn Scott, who's the principal at West Elementary School in Athens. Thank you both so much Thank for you. being Thank here you. today. Before we even start our conversation, this is such an interesting top topic, let's listen to what Roger Wilkins, who was the director of a pro progressive school here in Athens, has to say about the extraordinary pressure on grade school kids today. Okay. I am hearing is first that quite a number of good teachers are leaving the profession because they're increasingly frustrated with um, the lack of support for what they know is good teaching. Uh, secondly, the, the teachers are increasingly frustrated because their attention is directed towards meeting the, the needs of preparation for the test rather than in responding to the emerging needs of the child. Children in uh, early elementary grades are being expected to prepare for tests and to do a lot more homework, to really focus on academic areas uh, to the exclusion almost of uh, broader social areas of uh, development through um, play and kinesthetic activities. I hear reports of even test anxiety among very young children and that is a very disturbing trend to me. I think that this is the result of I, the fact that public education has lost sight of what I consider to be the, the primary insight of education over the past hundred years and that is building on the work of Piaget and legions of other uh, researchers, we found that subjects must be presented in developmentally appropriate ways to children that build on their prior understanding and that relate to the level of development they've currently achieved. Particularly in young children, kindergarten, first grade, and proceeding on up from there, that the primary task of education should be to nurture the love of learning in children. And if that is nurtured, children will become self-directed learners and the many questions of how to motivate them, how to keep them on task, will fade into the background. Margaret, let me ask you, because um, Roger basically, he highlighted two things. The emphasis on standardized testing today and the enormous pressure on even young children to do a lot of homework at night. Is this, have you seen uh, a real shift in emphasis in those two things in the last few years? Yes, I, I think there has been a, a, a substantial um, shift because I can remember when I first came to our university even, some of the questions that we're asking now we weren't even thinking about, such as um, whether we were, we were sort of figuring out whether or not we needed to test children at that age. And now the, it's not even a question, it's we automatically do it's it. It's not even a national debate anymore, right. it's we, a given. Right, and so basically we've changed like that, even in terms of subject matter. Um, kids, children used to go to kindergarten to, for socialization, for interaction with their peers, for learning how, learning basic kinds of things, uh, ex exploring their environment, doing those kinds of things. And again, um, reading was taught in a more informal way. And now there's a lot of pressure on some children that they must be reading by the end of kindergarten as opposed to by the end of first grade or by the end of second grade. And so there's tremendous pressure on children who may not be developmentally ready to do that. They might have a great interest in books. They might have a great interest in learning to read, but they don't have the developmental skills that they need to be able to do it at this particular time. And I think for some of those children, uh, what happens is we do a real disservice to them because they are cut off before they even have an opportunity to learn the things that they need to learn because they've, they've already become failures. Joan, do you think the no school, uh, no child, no school left behind, no child left behind act? <laughs> some people think it is no school left yes. behind. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that that is, has, a, has had a big effect on American education? Uh, absolutely. Uh, it's, it's put new, I would say, pressures, uh, new accountab accountability measures on us that, um, that, that become punitive. Uh, I don't think anybody would argue that we need standards in education. We absolutely do. I think it has made our um, 
profession a little bit more clear cut. We know the guidelines, we know what the expectations are, and I, and I don't think any of us would argue that those are necessary. What happens is, is that through the testing and the reporting, uh, punitive measures are applied, and through No Child Left Behind, those become rather serious. And, and I think that's where it becomes difficult for us all, and that's where we feel the stress. So, so what this essentially translates into is, if, if the students don't test to a certain standard, the school gets punished. I mean, that, and in a sense, and it's really a sort of a district look, um, but it also can be a school look that if you don't uh, become effective or you're not rated effective, and the formula for becoming effective is quite complex. So it's not even easy to, within your own school, to look at your scores and say, well, we're going to meet that mark or not because there's so many factors that come into it now, and each year it becomes more and more complicated. Roger alluded to test anxiety among very young children. Do you see that in the students well, at I think West it's Elementary? interesting that we're doing this show now because testing week begins on Monday. So, uh, and actually this year we test every single day. Now our kindergarten through first grade students are tested to me, um, it, it's, an, it's an appropriate way. Uh, most of it is given on a one-on-one -on -one basis. It's more of a diagnostic measure meant to assess how well we're teaching. And are the kids um, highly aware of the fact that they're going to be tested? Is this? My guess would be it depends on the school. I would say in our school we don't make, we, we try to reach a balance. I think as with anything, yes, we, it is important to us, but at the same time, uh, we try to be realistic in the way that it's not the most important thing that we're doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, we try to make children feel comfortable that it's not a measure on you per se, but more on how we as teachers are doing our job. And so we try to de-stress it in that way that really we're taking a close look at ourselves and seeing what it is we need to do to improve our instruction. I, I, I think that uh, when we look at the testing, if it were, I mean, well, the National Association for Education and Children has come out with a position statement and it's about 10 years old where they recommend no testing for children under the age of eight, no standardized test mm -hmm. for the children for children under the age of eight. And I mean, to me, that seems reasonable because um, their the way they think, the way they process information changes from almost from moment to moment. So I don't think that you really get a clear reading of what children really know or what, what they don't know if your key measure is a standardized test for children, say, under the age of eight. The other issue is that um, I know that teachers sometimes feel a lot of test anxiety as a part of this whole process. It's almost grading them it, too. It's almost grading them yeah. too and uh, I know that I've talked to teachers who've been in situations with first and second grade children who cry during the testing and they and in some cases they don't feel that they have any um, way not to give the test to the child even if the child is crying mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. that is very stressful on a teacher but that is really stressful on a child who is crying their way through a test. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that is, to me that is almost, I, mean, I won't say almost, that is unacceptable to me for a child to be put in that kind of stressful situation. I would think too, th this could really affect children's self-esteem because when you're mm -hmm. very young and right. suddenly you know, oh I don't do so well on tests, right. it's almost like putting a price tag on a child's brain right. when they're very, very young and kids already know, oh I'm not so smart, I'm, I'm, oh, I, or I am very smart because I do well on standardized tests. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess personally, I think that's a real problem because they think that we create in a society children who think that they are very, very smart and they know everything. And then on the other hand, we create children who don't think they know anything and it's somewhere in between. And I mean, there are children who know a lot about this, I know a lot about that, and they don't know so much about whatever. And I know with college students, one of the things I notice is that many of the students that I see have been excellent students in uh, grade school and high school and then they come to college and they realize that there might even be someone here who's smarter than they are and uh, and that's really difficult and sometimes some of the better students don't even do as well because they have never had the experience that there are kids who can do better than they can. 